So, uh, <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, doing this presentation together with uh, Martine. Uh, she will do uh, later on uh, the introduction of the company she's working for. I'm working for PostNL. Uh, PostNL, uh, the postal operator in the Netherlands, uh, the what we say the local hero. And doing business uh, together with Swappy, and I will uh, do some questions uh, or have some questions for her later on. We are present uh, in the Netherlands, but also outside the Netherlands as well, uh, branded with the Spring Global Delivery Solutions, and we offer cross-border e-commerce, uh, what of course is very, uh, very important. And uh, in the end, uh, the most important thing is uh, the last mile and uh, doing the business with, uh, with the local hero. Yesterday evening, uh, I was honored to, to give uh, an award to Martine, and uh, she accepted the award. <laughs> <laughs> thank God. And it was a very nice evening, so thank you very much for the organization uh, by this. And uh, Martine, can you tell uh, a little bit about, uh, about Swappy, what you are doing, and so on? I can, I can. So uh, for those who have not met, I'm Martine Hardeveld Kleuver, uh, very Dutch. <laughs> uh, and I work for Swappy as the country lead for the Benelux. Swappy is a company that refurbishes iPhones. Uh, we buy them, we refurbish them ourselves, and we sell them as well. Uh, so if you have an old iPhone at home, please uh, check our website because we need, we need the iPhones. Um, where to start? We are uh, an online uh, shop, um, have been since 2016 when our founder uh, started the company in Helsinki. And over the years, we've grown very fast. And right now we're active in 12 countries in Europe. And last year we were uh, awarded the fastest growing company of Europe. So uh, as you can hear, it's going quite well. There's quite some demand, but uh, there's still some work to be done to improve the circular economy. And we feel like we're contributing to that uh, quite a bit. We've done our millionth sale uh, recently. So um, uh, we're, go we're getting there. Um, yeah, I guess that's a little bit of the explanation of what the company does. Yeah, it's, uh, we have a good cooperation together. And yes. Uh, we, we started... Uh, last year with uh, with uh, with the negotiations but started this year sending parcels via postnl in the netherlands uh, it's always uh, a challenge to have uh, it resource available it is and even in uh, a, a quick company like you are that's a, that's a, that's a challenge as well uh, can you tell uh, a little bit about uh, how the uh, your customers are looking to a refurbished market is that uh, a normal market or uh, are you well known on that? Can mm -hmm. you tell uh, the audience a bit yeah. about? So um, I think it's good to to start with that. We yes, we are selling refurbished iPhones, and yes, they're better for the environment than a first-hand phone. But we don't really look at it as a sustainable uh, improvement of your phone. Everybody needs a phone, uh, and we view it as if you are in the market for a new phone and you can ch pick a new phone or one that is more affordable and better for the environment, then why, why not go for the, for the latter? Um, we don't want to say, oh, uh, you have to pay more for it because it's a sustainable option or anything. We want to make it easy for you and very accessible to, to make the better choice without having to hand in anything on quality or price. Um, and our customers uh, see that as well. Uh, most of the customers, they come to us for uh, the affordability because refurbished iPhones, they are secondhand. So they are often around 30, 40% cheaper than a new iPhone. Um, but we see a, a shift. So the younger generation up to, let's say, 25 years old, they really pick us for sustainability reasons. So you can see that there is a shift in, in consumers and that it's becoming more important to offer uh, the generation that is going to be our biggest buyer uh, segment, the alternative of a, of a better sustainable option. And do you see difference in, in the countries? Huh? You are working in a lot of European yeah. countries. Mm -hmm. Are there differences as well? Yeah, many differences. We see in the Nordics, they're much further when it comes to sustainability. So like I said, our headquarters is in Helsinki. I remember the first time visiting uh, in the hotel, opening the garbage bin, and there were six different colors of garbage bin there. I, didn't, I can go a gray, green, maybe plastic paper, but the other two, I've still not figured out what they're for. Uh, but that's how far they are already in Finland when it comes to 
uh, segregation of, uh, of waste, but also when it comes to refurbished or oat milk or anything that is better for the environment, it's super top of mind and people are actively looking for ways that they can improve their uh, footprint on the world. However, in the uh, West, like more of the Netherlands, um, people pick refurbished for the price. They're very much into what is a good quality deal. Um, and then, for example, the selling of the iPhone becomes a very big part. The Netherlands is, is one of the most, uh, the biggest countries that sell iPhones back to us. Uh, and you would expect Belgium to maybe be a little similar, but they are not there. They are more into, um, I don't know, I want to keep it as a spare. Um, maybe my phone breaks down, I need, a, I need a, an extra one in case. Um, but then when you go lower even to Portugal, uh, there people are looking uh, into what can I actually afford and then finding a phone next to it. So where in the Netherlands it's more about the quality price, in the south it's more what can I afford. So there for example it's very important that we have uh, payments in terms um, or pay later uh, at, the, at the bare minimum because otherwise it's for a lot of people in, in Portugal and Spain uh, not affordable to buy a, a phone. So you see that it shifts in different countries. You also see it in the model mix. So the lower you go, uh, the more lower iPhone numbers we sell. Uh, in terms of the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 are big numbers in Slovakia and in Portugal. And in the Netherlands, it's more the 12, 13, 14. Um, and then, but if you go even higher to, to Norway, uh, Sweden, like Scandinavia, basically, there it's a bit broader because people over there buy it for sustainability reasons. So they're not actively looking for a new phone or a yearly upgrade or anything. Okay, thank you. And looking at uh, the, the refurbished market, uh, is, is that well known? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an older person and <laughs> when I sell my uh, iPhone, I will go to a shop yeah. and uh, the money in my hand. Uh, mm -hmm. So that feels yeah. comfortable for me. But how does it work in, in your industry? Is, is everybody happy with, 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 with your solution? and? easy uh, doing business with you? So, um, without getting too sales pitchy, our mission is to make refurbished mainstream. And to us, that means that whenever you are in the market for a new phone, uh, it is, should be easily in your brain to be like, ah, oh, maybe I want to buy refurbished. So you should know it. Then second of all, it should be high quality, which is why we have our own factory and we don't buy the refurbished items uh, ready-made. We refurbish them ourselves. They should be accessible, which is where PostNL comes in, fast delivery. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's what we want. That's what we want, but we're not there yet. So we are growing, yes, but refurbish is not a top of mind thing at all when we step out of Scandinavia. And that's where I come in, uh, where I do lots of marketing and PR to make it a bigger topic uh, for people to understand. We are struggling a lot with uh, trust aspect um, because in the beginning of the 2000s, there were a lot of countries that have refurbished companies that either went bankrupt or delivered poor quality. And that tainted a little bit of the reputation of refurbished as a whole. Uh, you maybe know a person that once had a refurbished laptop that broke down after a month and then you're hesitant to buy any refurbished product right now. Um, so one of our biggest struggles is trust. And um, that is also why we pick certain partners in certain countries to increase that trust. It's why we pick PostNL. And, and I remember the, the first talks we have, eh, and you said to me, uh, no matter what it costs uh, yeah. between, between bars, but okay, but I want to do business with PostNL. Is that one of the reasons that we are do, uh, cooperate together? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we see whenever we do stuff localized, uh, conversion goes up, sales go up, uh, it's better for, for everybody, basically. And that is not just in the Netherlands, but we've had similar cases in Italy, in Portugal, where we do a similar setup. For example, in Italy and in Portugal, we worked with Scalape. I saw that they're here today as well. Uh, immediately, conversion goes up because Scalape is very known and therefore sales go up. Because if you work together with a trusted partner, that automatically translates into trust into your company. So in the end, uh, the... the, the uh what we said in, in our presentation, do business uh, with, with the local hero of mm -hmm. the power of the local hero, you recognized. Yeah. And you will advise that as well to, to everybody who's doing cross-border e-commerce. Definitely. If you are in a business that is lesser known 
or in a business that people might have reservations about, then I highly recommend working with trusted partners because it will increase your conversion rates. Yeah, and doing business in the Netherlands is uh, beneficial as well. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs>